afternoon to all our viewers on Mac TV as we continue coverage here during this quarantine period of the COVID-19 virus. And we want to continue to wish you and your families all the best. Please stay safe, stay at home as we are all doing at this point in time and save some lives. Well, joining us this afternoon is a very dear friend out of Canada, a man who is no stranger to cricket in North America, also in the West Indies, a man by the name of Prem Basad. And uh, he is, of course, uh, the president of, uh, he was telling me early on, the Brampton League, and it's called the BEDCL, a very popular, it's the biggest cricket league in Canada. And uh, he is going to tell us a bit about uh, that and what the effects of the COVID has had on that league as well. And uh, he's just going to bring us up to scratch from his perspective. Good afternoon, Prem. How are you? Good afternoon, Vinod. I'm doing fine. Um... Thanks for having me on this uh, on Mac TV. Thanks to Mac as well. Um, yes, uh, as you know, across the world. But before I start, I should like to echo what you said. Everyone who is listening and who tunes into this broadcast, keep observing all of the discussions and all of the advice that you get from your health officers, your government, and your various cities, because it's extremely important that we all do our part and contribute to capping the spread of this virus and getting out of it as soon as possible. As you know, every, every country, every city has their own different rules of doing this, right? Yes. And uh, what's the situation on, uh, in your area? In Trinidad and Tobago, uh, things are pretty quiet. We've had now, this is the, for the last 10 days, we've had one positive case and uh, things are looking uh, pretty good in terms of the situation here in Trinidad and Tobago. What's it like in your neck of the woods? Um, in my neck of the woods uh, in Ontario, yesterday we had about 600 and something extra cases. Today we had another 400, 420 something extra cases. Um, I put some numbers for you because I know that's what you will be getting into. Um, Canada-wide there is 24,107. Mm -hmm. cases. Ontario is 14,856. Um, um, sorry, sorry. Canada is 47,323 across mm -hmm. Canada with 2,617 fatalities, right? In uh, Ontario, we have recorded 14,856 reported cases with uh, um, 432 uh re reported within the last two hours um two days so it's it's very very severe in ontario and quebec quebec alone had twenty four thousand one hundred seven cases reported wow. with, and, and and the death toll is drastically within the last two weeks um senior care citizens senior citizens ho home caring facilities are having a lot of seniors passing away, like quarter of their population. You're talking about 16, 15, 20, which is really sad because no, none of their relatives could be present. They are using video conferencing to get them to have their last word or say their last departing wishes. <coughs> so COVID has hit us a pre, pre, a hard actually across Canada. And in the two, Alberta is the third province that's also being hit severely and as you know the province i'm calling out those are cricketing provinces yeah. so from our sports perspective we have had to cancel at our provincial level as you know you interviewed shaji is now the president i'm the vice president we had to cancel all of our uh, winter high performance programs we had two sets of youth under 17 and under 15 where we had like 75 kids that registered for each one of those and we took about 35. We were about quarter ways through that when we started the cities and the government and the health officers start recommending these uh, stay home, stay safe uh, and help to curb the spread of these uh, viruses. We have been working with our government ministries and at their advice, so we closed down that youth high performance we also started this year resurrecting the women's cricket in Canada at the provincial mm -hmm. level. And mm -hmm. we started our second winter indoor high performance for women. Unfortunately, after the two trials and two sessions, we also had to cancel 
those um, high performance. As for the leagues right now, the position we're in, all the cities that we play cricket in, all the major cities, and, and it's across the provinces as well, have closed outdoor facilities along with other facilities because everything that's termed essential services are the only one that's being allowed to stay open with social distancing, wearing your mask, wearing your gloves, having your hand sanitizers, having uh, a shields at the counter if they do allow takeout in the restaurants. A lot of small businesses I had to shut down and may probably never recover. Businesses are open like restaurants if would do takeout. So the takeout business actually has been booming because you have oh, five, six of them now um, that are doing takeout food delivery at no charge, but they charge the restaurants for doing that. Yeah, so, so the supermarkets are also doing well. They normally do well, but I think this time they're doing even better as the people are now cooking at home. Yes, uh, um, people are cooking at home. People are not going out. Many people are observing the, 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 the precautions as laid out by, by their respective health officers for their respective cities and the respective mayors. Here in Brampton, where the major part of my cricket league, our cricket league exists, we have an amazing mayor and council who has reacted to form different task, task force. Today, they announced uh, a social, add this up here, as an, an economic support task force and a social support task force. These two have been tasked with the, uh, everyone now is talking after seven weeks of lockdown and uh, uh, locking the economy down and the negative impacts on the economy. Um, different mayors and the premier are looking at what are the best options available for them to open up more more of the services that was left uh, that were closed so determining what other essential services they can add whether they bring it in layer or whatever the logistics are doing that they're all thinking about it now and they're all planning as to how they will do that eventual opening up of certain areas that can for example small businesses maybe capping 30 people in the restaurants at a time still maintaining social distances because people are suffering severely, especially small businesses, the restaurateurs, the mom and pops places, they're all suffering. The economy is suffering, as you know, right? Uh, I guess uh, that's, uh, that makes it uh, doubly difficult. And uh, there is uh, this discussion, this debate as to, uh, you know, how soon things can open back, at least uh, on a smaller scale. We saw the, the governor of Georgia, and what he did, he decided to bite the bullet and open up. Um, you know, a number of services uh, over the weekend. And after just one day, he recorded 643 cases and uh, 20 other extra deaths. Now, the deaths might have been incoming because there have been those affected already. <clears throat> but you're seeing uh, a situation where he was in two minds because of uh, looking at the economy, which is also essential. And they decided to go early, a bit too early, I think and that uh, he's now suffering the consequences of that. Well, that's the dilemma. That's the dilemma that everybody is faced now. How do you open up the, 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 uh, the lockdown? How do you open it so it affects, has a positive effect on the economy? And how do you do it so that a second wave of this virus doesn't hit you from, the, from center field? Because I listened to um, the governor of New York, Cuomo, and he had a very detailed, explicit a uh, step-by-step -step process that he said that if you're going to do an opening, you have to address A, B, C, D, E. And it was very, very detailed. And I think that's what everybody is trying to do. When you open up just cold turkey, everything, yes, you may do that because you saw the, 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 the new cases curve come down. You saw the, the rate of fatalities come down. But when you open it up and everybody is able to go back and be uh, uh, in a uh, area where you will have community transfer, possibility of increasing, you are make, opening up yourself to another level of, or a second wave of this virus. Because as everybody has discussed it, we are going through the first wave. Yes. Some, some areas have reached a peak. Some of them haven't reached their peak. But as you start coming down from that peak, all the experts warn, don't be complacent, as, as you said, and keep 
keep following the precautions and keep making sure that what you open up will not have a negative impact and, and having a second wave start it again. Right. Definitely. So you have to be very, very careful with that. Uh, but, you know, just to switch a bit and uh, to speak a bit about your league, when was the due date to begin cricket in well, your league? Okay. Um, our league, uh, we have two formats, a morning T25 format that, that is extremely popular. And we have an afternoon, the regular ODI 50 over. Our mm -hmm. league usually starts in the second weekend of May. And uh, the first two weeks, we play all of the T25 in order to get them in. We have a, last year, we had 151 teams. This year, we have 181 teams. Um, so to try to get them to have 16 games, we start them the first two weeks and they play three games per day. The regular format is we play that one in the morning and then the afternoon. We have 17 cricket facilities in Brampton. Uh, our mayor elected has been a tremendous boost to us with cutting our fields to half an inch. We had the first lighted, true ICC lighted cricket pitch last year. And we have one more coming up this year. And then we have two more planned in the next two years. And another facility which have a, a, a brand new wicket and another one as well. Two came up and three more will come up in the next two years. So facility wise, it's not a problem, but the cities we deal in the city of Toronto, city of uh, Brampton, um, Burlington, and everyone has shut down all outdoor facilities indefinitely. Some of them are closed, they said, until June 29th, and they will reevaluate. Our biggest city, uh, they are saying that it's indefinitely, but uh, there have been discussions on this opening up and what will open up and what will not open up. They're not sure if the, the outdoor facilities will be including in the open up, but if so, they're suspecting the first week of July. We, on the other hand, have to be proactive because as a large league, if you wait on the last minute to scramble to make a schedule, you will be dead in the water. Mm -hmm. but fortunately, we have extremely good membership. We used to get our fees ahead of time before season starts. Every club pays up their fees. So if we are looking at the no season, we have to look at the refund policies that we put in place. We look at the half a season, then we will look at the half on, half on, on. And then we give our, our, our teams the option of whether they want the money refunded to them or whether they want the money to roll over to the next season. But those are obstacles that we will have to plan for and contingencies we have to make. Right now, we have, re we have done a, a schedule and we put it up. Our boys have told me to put it up. I didn't look at it yet, but some of the teams are already looking at it. Thinking, hoping that we will have a July start which will give us a little bit more than half of a season. That being the case, with the two lighted facilities, I've spoken to the city and it's under consideration, we were going to start a new evening under the lights league in Canada, be the force. But being that we lose these dates, maybe we can use the evening to, re to recover our largest T25 fraction by playing them in the night. We don't know as yet, that's not set up. But we have been following and monitoring uh, the, the cities and the health officers and the mayors. As I told you, our mayor has been fantastic. He has created a um, task force to assist seniors, juniors in, in different aspects of business, small business and everything. And they are very active in getting people, the big business to pitch up money to help to support uh, uh, the, the, the frontline workers. They're very, very concerned and very supportive of our frontline workers, and so should everybody in every country. And these people put their up at stake when they're protecting all of us. So in the city of Brampton, the, the other cities are responding as well, but we, our mayor and his council has been fully on board in doing everything that they can to aid and, uh, and help the community. A lot of businesses have been donating foods, so we will have people sharing food, even our mayor get hands on sharing this food to the frontline workers, to different groups where, where it's needed. So we're getting help, and our government has pitched in as well to give, give financial help to everyone, right? So, so that's, that's wonderful. I mean, you live in a, in a country that is uh, always seen as forward thinking, and uh, now is the time that you would see that coming to the fore. Um, but yeah. you think that in your league, you can probably at best get a little, a little more than a half a season. We're, we're hoping that we will get half a season or, or more. 
and um, we will do a, a pro rata on their fees, as I said. But the balls, we we buy the balls for our league, and we sell it back to the team at like a dollar. On on the white one, zero, the, on the pink one's about a dollar. We have already paid for those balls. We pay like $80,000 for the balls, both colors for the whole season. So we can't return that. What would happen if they use half of the balls, they will keep half the next year and they will only purchase half of what they need. So we have been strategizing as to the possibility of how we will deal with our membership in the event that we play no season, half a season, quarter of a season, whatever, because as you know, cricketers, they don't rest. They want to go out. We have charges imposed by all the cities. And unfortunately, uh, a soccer group was caught. Two cricket groups were caught breaking the rules uh, and not respecting the social. And we're fine. They're very severe fines going up to $100,000 from about 1000 and plus, depending on the severity. Even if people throw a, a backyard party, which one group did, and they all faced about $8,000 to $100,000 in charges. So... The, the government is taking it serious. The city is taking it serious. We have posted about two COVID-19 advisories to our membership and to all cricketers. Uh, on, and, and on behalf of Cricket Ontario, we posted to all of our members to be complacent, you know, respect the rules, respect the disease, don't take it lightly, um, put your mask on, put your gloves on, follow the protocols, and stay safe. That's, that's all we could do. What has been the response from uh, the cricket club and uh, some of the, the players uh, to this situation? I'm sure that you've been in touch with them. What has really been their response? Their response has been pretty good. Our players understand the situation. They live here. They follow the same things that we follow. We ask them to monitor it the way we're monitoring it. And we have had not a single negative um, communication to us. They're all The only communication now and again, they will ask, Prim, do you guys have an idea when we will start? Um, is there a possibility of a season? And our answer to them is very simple. We have put out the two notices to you guys. We are observing it the same way as you are observing it. And until the city and, uh, and, and the parks and recs give us the permission that the, these facilities and outdoors will be reopened, we can't do anything. So we're actually dictated by those policies as to whether we can hope not to do cricket or not. And they have been very understanding. Mm -hmm. you, just to back up a bit, uh, you, you mentioned that you've already purchased balls for the new season. And um, I guess in this situation, you, you're pretty lucky. Your power uh, planning and uh, your efficiency is working well for you now because of the fact that uh, it's going to be very difficult to get the balls from Asia into North America at this point in time. So at precisely. least you don't have stuff on hand. No, precisely. And, and we, do, we, have, we have done this for years, uh, Vinod. Um, I have been the president of this cricket league uh, for 34 years and counting. When I started, we had 18 teams. So you learn, you know, before the clubs are responsible for their own cricket balls, then you have the fake balls, breaking the bat, complaints, blah, blah. So then they ask us to take it over. We have one supplier that we've been using for the last, I would say, 15 plus years. And his quality of his cricket balls at first start low and then has progressed. And we're at a place where the cricket balls are perfect. We have an arrangement. He knows we give him how much we need. He orders it. He brings it in. We're ready for distribution. We do sometimes one or two distribution for the season before it, well, before it starts. So everybody has their cricket balls allotted 16 cricket balls for 16 games, and then we have the balls to the playoffs. So you're very, very correct. We're fortunate that all of the cricket balls that we ordered have been delivered, except when we had new teams that came in, which you can't predict the number of new teams you will mm -hmm. take. Because in your case, you have 30. Pardon? In your case, you have 30 new teams joining. Exactly. And if we had the facilities, we turned away another 15. Every year, we turn away about 10 to 15 teams from joining because we don't have facilities. But as I said, our mayor and council has been amazing and they've been working with myself and my board and we are building new facilities since they have come in. And um, we, we have plans for a, a better quality pitches, outfield, and we have turf pitches that were supposed to come up this year, but 
being that the COVID and construction and all of these things can happen, we don't know where those will be. But had they not been impacted, we would have had four turf wickets introduced this year. Uh, City have procured all of the regular required machine, cutting machines, rolling machines, shaving machines, all of that stuff, because I've been going for this for years, and they agreed the last two years to bring it in. So we have an amazing city, amazing mayor and council has been working with us. And, and he, he, he has a message and he says to everyone, he wants to make Brampton the cricket, the capit, cricket capital of Canada in the end. Wow, that's great. And well, he has some great administrators there to work with. And yeah. that would be a good head start for him. But tell me, the lack of cricket, you know, there is a, the U.S. Open table to get off in seven months time. Now, one cannot predict when you can have cricket again. No, no. In seven months' time, it's possible that that ambition might come true. Uh, we could stage the U.S. Open. You've been to the U.S. Open on many occasions. You've been an administrator at the U.S. Open as well. Tell me yes, your thoughts yeah. on the lack of cricket. Let's say you have a half a season in Canada. In Canada. Do you think this would lead to teams looking to cross the border and come down and play at the U.S. Open, given the fact that uh, it'll be an opportunity to play some more cricket? Well, I, I don't think it's whether it's with the lack of cricket or anything. As you said, when I was with in at the U.S. Open, Shaji is still an ad director and administrator in U.S. Open. When, uh, when, in, in, when I went there, the first two, three years, there was a lot of Canadian content on the, the various teams that participated in the U.S. Open. Recently, I don't see that many boys in the mm -hmm. U.S. Open as they used to be before. I don't know why. I don't have this, the, the answer for that. Um, I, I thought the number will grow instead of having gone down. Because it is a good format for, 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 for cricket. It's uh, Mac is spending a lot of time and money and dedication into growing cricket in the U.S. And everybody should commend him for that. You know, when people have a passion, you have a passion, but you need the financial to, 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 to back that passion and to stay committed to doing it over all these years. I can tell you because <clears throat> committed to grow a, a, a league from 18 team to where we are right now. It takes a lot of personal commitment and a lot of time and a lot of dedication from, from individuals who have a real passion for the game. And, and that's what the situation is. That's what we have over here. Even we were impacted, we were to have our um, interprovincial T20 between all the members of Cricket Ontario. That is on hold. We were to have an interleague competition with all of the, 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 the top members of Cricket Ontario. That has been put on hold. And all the other stuff that I told you have been put on hold. So it is a major impact. So, yeah, uh, uh, US, and we always take our youth to the CCUSA youth contributions which uh, Mac told me this year he might want to go to Florida and change it, change it up a bit because of the what happened last year with the rain and all of that stuff. And when you have the youth focus on the youth only and not blending it with the senior and the youth at the same time. So yes, it's a positive thing. And, and hopefully whatever that reason for uh, the Canadian content going down, I, I'm not sure what it is. Mac might be more of a person who can answer why that has happened. But no. You've known the man, Matt Parish. He said just now that he has uh, done a lot in the terms of, uh, you know, getting a cricket uh, in the, into different areas in America. He has done tremendous work in the development of cricket in America. Uh, your your thoughts on the, the man, Matt Parish? Um, the thoughts on Matt Parish, um, when I first met him, I'm very impressed with him as an individual, as an administrator, and the passion that he has for the game. Like I said, it's unique. You, 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 you don't find that many people having that dedication, that passion, and keep putting their money and, and, and their, their, their services behind something year after year after year, despite what may be the outcome from one year to the next. And as usual, you go through growing stages and you will have issues at the beginning and coming through. And weather is a huge factor in any of the games that any of us go anywhere on the globe, right? So a rain affected uh, um, competition should not be blamed on the administrators. That's, that's an act of God. 
So I, I'm, I'm very impressed with Matt and, and his organization and the organization itself. CCUSA has grown to include not only people that are living right there with Mac, but all over the US, from every one of the states, including yourself and guys like myself and Shaji. We, we, it's, it's gone beyond the borders of, of, of uh, um, America. He's even went into the islands and the whole the, um, the, the, um, Cricket 59, right? Yeah. As another. Yeah, that was my next question. Cricket 59. Um, there is supposed to be a tournament hosted or at least sponsored by Mark Cricket 59 uh, together with uh, you guys in Ontario. What's yes. the situation with that? Well, let me give you a little background, Vinod. We were trying to work with Mac for a long time since I met you the first time and the whole competition. As you know, he held the, the first one with Niagara. Mm -hmm. In the region Niagara with, 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 with Niagara. And that's where we, myself and Shaji, were running the tournament for him in Niagara along with the Niagara Cricket in the Hamilton League. Um, since then, we have talked about bringing a, a T10 co um, T20 competition to Ontario, and that time you had to look at the Canada permissions, the Ontario permissions, the other players coming. And we worked on that, and Cricket Canada has finally been on board, and we were working on having the T20. But Mark requested, let's make it a, a Cricket 59. So yeah. we agreed to that. So this year, this summer, a Cricket 59 was planned along with those other activities that I told you was planned at the provincial level. But Mac has that, we have, we have drawn up an MOU, Mac has it, he, he has reviewed it, he had agreed he was going to sign it, uh, Shaji was away and when Shaji come back, he was going to look at it. We came up at the um, US Open and we talked about it. So that is again, another competition that's in the limbo, depending on whether we will be able to have cricket or not. It was, yeah. scheduled, it was scheduled for the month of August. So the possibility still lies that we could do it, but we also have to look at the possibilities of our, our own uh, uh, provincial T20 championship, our interleague championship. And now we had scheduled and put those in our cricket calendar, along with cricket Canada having other activities that are also being impacted. For example, our youth, the Canada Cup would also be impacted. So now you will have to go back to the drawing board and reassess and, 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 and decide on which ones you're going to do and where you're going to place them. We had to cancel our women Canada Day um, competitions mm -hmm. and we wanted to run an, an Ontario Women Open, inviting uh, teams that if Mac could put in teams from, for the ladies or other people that I have we have met at Max Mac tournament from the other United States. So send their women team. A lot of people are interested in, in, in these things. But again, with the impact of COVID-19, we have to re go back to the table, replan and re reassess. Like you said, it, there could be a possibility, but that's all we know now. It's a possibility. Right? Well, it's great that at least uh, when this thing blows over, at least, uh, you know, there, uh, there's a lot of things that uh, the cricket fans and cricket players in Canada can look forward to, the Mark 59 being one all your wonderful initiatives you spoke of, an evening, a night league, and that's uh, something else that they can look forward to as well. Well, Brim, I want to thank you for joining us on the Mac TV this afternoon. Uh, rest assured, we'll be coming back to you during this period to get an update. And uh, so keep a uh, record of those figures. I know you're, you're a very serious man when it comes to figures. And um, we're going to come back to you as we go along to keep our listeners abreast as to the situation in Canada. Absolutely, not a problem. Anytime you guys need me, I'll be here. All right. Happy birthday, Dave, from Prem Prasad, one of the big men in terms of administration of cricket in Canada. And he just gave a perspective to our viewers on what's happening in Canada mm -hmm. as far as the COVID 19 is concerned. Keep you in Mac TV. We continue to entertain you during this period. Which is the most authentic cricketing league in America? U.S. US Open, Open cricket. cricket. Which is the most exciting cricket in America? U.S. US Open, Open cricket. cricket.
Which cricket league has the higher number of views in America? U.S. US Open, Open cricket. cricket. Which cricket league has the higher number of players in America? U.S. US Open, Open cricket. cricket. Which cricket league has the higher number of teams in America? U.S. US Open, Open cricket. cricket. Which cricket league has the higher number of cash prizes in America? U.S. US Open, Open cricket. cricket. Get ready for the biggest cricketing event in America, U.S. Open Cricket 2020, from December 16th to December 20th, 2020, at the Central Broward Cricket Stadium, Fort Lauderhill, Florida. It'll be aired live on MAC-TV. Let's play 2020 in 2020.